Well, good morning, Catalina Foothills Church. It's Pastor John Stone here in my office, and uh, good to be with you on this Tuesday morning. Uh, and we're in Acts chapter 3, um, sort of a pretty famous passage here, uh, where Peter and John are going into the temple, and a beggar uh, asks them to heal him. It says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. At three in the afternoon, now a man who was lame from birth was being uh, carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, who was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said to him, look at us. So the man gave him his attention, expecting to get something from them. And then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles came strong. You know, through this miracle, God was attesting to the validity of John and Peter's apostleship. And as you read the rest of the chapter, you recognize that God let this miracle take place, and and, and John and Peter had the power to let the, the miracle go. And we're told later in Acts, we'll see this, that often their shadow would heal people. But this, this miracle comes, miracles like no one has ever seen since, and really no one has seen before, because... People needed to know in the absence of like a New Testament, right, that they should listen to John and Peter, that they had a unique power. But what's interesting about that exchange is is they say and they show this amazing power to heal this man's legs so that he instantly walks. He may not have walked in a year or six months or maybe ever, and yet instantly he's healed and he can walk, and instead of saying, let me heal everybody else, and the and James and John would heal people, <coughs> he says in his sermon, God has used this miracle to attest to the power of Jesus' resurrection. As you read the, the rest of the chapter, for instance, at the end it says, uh, indeed, beginning with Samuel, all the prophets who have spoken have foretold these days, and you are heirs of the prophets of the covenant, God made with your for, with your fathers. He said to Abraham, through your offspring, all people on earth will be blessed. When, when God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. So a couple things to take away from this which are interesting. Number one is that the power of miracles was intentionally sent to point us to Jesus Christ. So when we experience a miracle or when we see a miracle, uh, or especially as we see them in Scripture, we recognize that they don't come necessarily to draw our eye to James, I'm sorry, to John and Peter, although they do, and we're to listen to them. They're to draw our attention and thinking to the person of Jesus. It was the resurrection, Jesus overcoming death, that al- allowed his apostles and followers to have the same power to overcome death. And they had the same power so they could testify to the Jewish nation that everything, all of the Old Testament, had in fact been pointing to Jesus, which is what he says in verses 24, 25, and 26, which you read. All of the prophets, all of them pointed to Jesus. But I think a second interesting thing to note here in this passage is that James and John are dealing with a man who's impoverished. And I want you to know as your pastor, I I am proud of the history of this church's Um, generosity to the poor, but I want to call us to continue to be generous to the poor because they don't have money to give him. They don't have gold. The apostles themselves probably lived hand to mouth and lived by donations. And they say, I can't actually give you any gold or money. We don't have any. Which runs a little contrary to most people's instincts today. Most of the instincts of the Christian church or of Christians, and this is understandable, is to say to people, I can meet every need of you, and then you can believe in Jesus. But, but you know, they weren't able to deal with this poverty here. And, and maybe you would argue they dealt with it later because of the generosity of the New Testament church, but they didn't deal with it here. They just said, look, I can't fix your poverty, but I can fix your feet, and if I fix your feet, I want you to believe in Jesus. He goes, well, here's what I have. I have the person of Jesus Christ. And I think it's easy to be ashamed when we look at people who are really hurting or really broken and really lost and say, have to say to them, I can't fix everything. But I can tell you to go believe in Jesus Christ and it'll help. It'll begin to change you. It may not change all your physical infirmities. It may not change all of your poverty. 
But it is the most foundational thing there. And I just would encourage us today to stop being ashamed of the idea that Christians are offering people a relationship with Jesus Christ through his word and by his spirit that we in fact cannot fix all of the ills that people have or everything going on with them. But we can offer to be their friend. We can offer to be in relationship with them. And we can offer Jesus Christ. Some of us can fix poverty. And some of us can heal because we're doctors. But many of us can't. But we need to have the confidence of the apostles to say, I can't fix all your problems. But I can tell you about Jesus Christ because he can change you both now, but more importantly forever. Hey, great being with you today. Catalina Fiddles Church, look forward to seeing you on Sunday, either online or in our service or seeing you later in our update. Have a great week.